I don't even know where to begin with this one. I'm actually gonna try and somehow rank all anywhere from 250 to like 300 and something. Look, I've not thought that far ahead. Just any Pokemon with form differences. I don't even know the total I'm gonna end up tallying up here. But you know, I don't even care about that number right now. Only number I care about is 5.6. I mean, do you really not know why? Is your brain smooth? Obviously, the latest 5.6 version of Honkai Impact 3rd, the hack and slash action RPG available on PC and your phone. And it's free to play, baby! Coming at you with the new character, Pardo Felice, who conjures up a weaponized, comically large cat. As I know, a lot of you lot of filthy hoarders haven't got a catch of all hardwired into your brains from an early age. So this game is for you lot, with constant updates added in for player events. Those who take Park get some fresh new outfits like Fervent Tempo's 8-Bit Fever or the Tipsy Hour. Now is the time to bring yourself in, because with the latest version, the Empyrean Legends event will be rerun. The Starless Night event is opening near the end of this latest version, rewarding you with some juicy crystals, Honkai shards, Reverus Calico fragments, and more. Top up 6,480 crystals or beat chips to get Hershey stamps and other bonuses. In addition to that, one outfit supply will rerun in version 5.6 for a limited time. All you can Collectors! Better not miss out on them 3 S rank battle suits and that A rank battle suit entering the dorm supply. Download the game now and use the code in the description for 30 crystals, 2888 asteroid, and a Hersha trial card. And it took me a good few trials to sort this video out, I swear to you. I was trying to lay out ground rules to define what a Pokemon form really counts as, but I just can't be asked to overcomplicate things. The rules can get in the bin. Makes all such a mess, a complete mare to sort out. Just anything that's an excuse. Exclusive form to a species of Pokemon. Yeah, that's the one. That sums it up. There you go. Surely, when you have a list where canonically the weakest Pokemon going is relevant, then that has to be the lowest. You know, I might have agreed with you there, up until Enamorous Portrait and Landscape decided to pipe up. Been two months and I still struggle to look at the pair of them. I don't even think this was even meant for the human eye, flying down here looking like RuPaul's JoJo stand. <laughs> Wishy-washy, he's gonna go second last here instead. At least, you know, when he's got no friends about to back him. I don't think you even need to whack out the calculator to figure out it has slightly less physical prowess than a singular seed on the bun of a Big Mac, because this design is really on brand enough for that. Looks like you could slide out of your mouth in one clean bite and leave skeleton only like a Tom and Jerry bit. Don't even think you'd need a set of teeth to get the job done. <laughs> You know, I actually like the concept of being able to GTA Barbie your Pokemon. The amount of bangers that idea would spawn up. A Lolan Diglett with that Homer comb over. You already know who'd be looking fresh. Skin fade Squirtle. Just a shame that I don't give the slightest of ratings towards Furfro. Let alone the 10 different trims it's been getting. Looking at all of these try hard attempts, I'd be taking him down the Turkish Barbers for that factory reset trim. Hooking him up with your man who sorts out Throw Rogan. Now that's a haircut you can set your watch to. When the new Dialga and Palkia got leaked, the title being thrown around I saw here and there was Lord Forms. Seemed fitting for our biblical nightmare duo, but now knowing fully that this is Origin Dialga and Palkia, and you're putting it in the same weight class as Distortion World Giratina, that just makes them so much worse in comparison. He's supposed to be in the same league as Cubist Art Dialga and Palkia? You know, there's a reason only one of this trio ever made it on a front cover. The other two would have been scaring people off, would have had financial implications. That's saying a lot because the one who didn't scare people off is Pokemon Satan. <laughs> I feel so mugged off getting gaslit by Cherub into thinking it was actually getting some juice off the sun this whole time. Even Sunflora gets a bit of biceps off the sunlight and that thing spawned off the roof of a Big Mac left in a warm car. Only took him four generations and reworking the entire game's mechanics to give it a power up. That's only in Legends Arceus. Might not even be a thing that stays around if it even ever makes the draft for a future game again. I'd actually say it's a lot worse for Cherub to be in the sunlight. Just dance is around, making it look twice as slappable. I wouldn't even consider punting it into a river in the overcast form. Wouldn't even cross my mind. But that sunshine form, your man would be gone for a few lengths. Wouldn't matter for it anyway. It's about as juiced up baking in the sun as it would be stuck to a crushed pack of jubblies at the bottom of the freezer. <laughs> 
the two worst version exclusives going. Your Novan Basculin over here committing a bit of gimmick infringement from Shellos and Gastrodon just pulled the concept off in a way that's far more ignorable. You'd think they'd be in the water because they're fish. I prefer to believe that they've already gone through the trouble of getting themselves in the river because they know being as dead as they are, they'd be tasting the Jordan 1s right after Cherim. Keldeo can learn whatever move it wants. Resolute or not, you can pray to every god listed on Wikipedia five times a day. Doesn't matter how much holy water you lube that forehead up with, your sword can be as sacred as you want. Your man's forehead can have the master sword sticking out. Doesn't matter, both Keldeos will always be sidemen. For this segment, three legendaries that aren't linked at all, except that they just had a slight color change, you know, for lore reasons, and uh, Xerneas, I didn't even notice it had forms, to be honest. I thought it was safe to assume Festive Xerneas was the base here, start streaming and wax on the LEDs. Apparently, even the God of Life comes with an off switch. Even the Fairy King gets sick of fairy lights everywhere all the time. Or you could cop yourself the touched up Prime Magina form before it took on 500 years of sitting in the loft and lost. Gonna have to push him for a car wash. Or maybe, let's reintroduce everyone's favourite pastime. I love a little bit of whacking out the Mr. Muscle for some badge polishing. Now this one bothers me the most. Look, I don't care about the anime, so I don't care about the pink neck monkey. It seems the ones with the pink necks are the Zarud who refuse to rip the faces of children, which honestly... Yeah, that, that was a big, that was a huge selling point for me. Nowhere near as terrifying this way. Not using those Arceus given claws for what they were built to do. But maybe it still gets a plenty of work using those grabbers protecting children instead. Okay, no, I think I get it now. The pink neck Zarudes are the natural predators to Galarian mimes. <laughs> All right, all right, so I'm gonna get started on the bulk of that big number I've put in the title with all of these cosmetics. The Florgeous species and its pollen spawning offspring all have a quirky set of five colors. Now, a fairly standard color swap set. I mean, yeah, they're all right. I don't mind them. Florgeous is a banger mon, deserves the extra detail put in. <laughs> I hate to disrespect this one. And I also think there's some 300 year old law on a dirty sheet of paper stating it counts as treason for me to disrespect anything tea related. You know, given what passport I own, I might get slung off on a catapult. But Poltygeist, these two are barely even a form change. It's like the Xerneas one, but even that's at least a noticeable change. An authentic and fulgazy teapot, that's actually a pretty great concept. An off brand creature. I never thought in the Pokemon realm you'd ever be able to lay down the. Your Jordans are but I don't think the textures even pop in enough in Sword and Shield for the human eye to detect this. The capped Pikachus are a fun gimmick. It's like a little card promo you'd get from going to see one of the movies, but integrated into the games. Actually, that sounds a lot more obvious now that I said. Yeah, no, yeah, of course. And this slot, you know, they might be sitting kind of in the C tier, you know, cosmetic tier. But I'm telling you now, the original cap would be going straight to S tier if it still had the iconic Cantonian Pikachu mass still retained. You have all of these Pikachu forms, so many of them. There's so many, and you're telling me not one of them is built like a Goron. <laughs> Arguably one of the rarest Pokemon going just for how exclusive it is. It's actually spiky eared Pichu Because it's only available from a heart gold soul silver event and you can't be transferring him across I think when you do it either it doesn't work or you know It just gets its ear clipped or something But I reckon this concept really should exist outside of Pokemon go and just little events like this Maybe in a similar way shinies do but for physical design changes Imagine the grafting people would be doing on live streams hunting for them shiny and rare form Combos, doubling up on the chances. Our Creamy has 63 variants of cream. That's a big bucket of cream. But really, it's nine different variants. Still, that's at least half of Markiplier's helping a milk or soda batch up all of these forms. If any Pokemon was asking for 63 different versions, an edible one is probably the right shout. 9.9 .9 pounds of cream. Damn, at that rate, a couple years down the line, gonna have a Galarian Snorlax form without his toes. <laughs> For a region that's done so many mons a bit dirty with his 3D models, Kalos really loves his aesthetics. You got Xerneas, you got the Florgia slot, Furfro, and then arguably the best purely cosmetic set going with Vivalon. The Pokeball one, yeah, that's the S tier one right there. Yeah, it, it wouldn't get me to read a newsletter for it or anything, but I can see why that's the exclusive one. <laughs> 
Deerling and Sourcebuck, they both have four forms each, which, you know, mostly okay enough. You know, they're, they're kind of just glorified fur throws. Nature is its barber. You already know which one is carrying the dead weight here. If I raised a Deerling and Sourcebuck clan, they wouldn't see a single radiator in their entire life. Their minds would implode if they accidentally discover fire while I'm not about. Christmas every day for the boys. Strict diet of milk cookies and carvery dindins with the family. Extra cold, of course. Don't want them having a hot meal and their bodies thinking spring's finally coming because that winter form is all that matters. <laughs> Cast form pretty much does Cherim's gimmick, but a lot better. A weather dial changing type around his environment. That's a sound little feature it's got going for it, but like... Just, just has nothing else going for it. Hey, cast form's praying they don't take even more Breath of the Wild features for future games. That weather icon in the corner's about to leave him on benefits. <laughs> I doubt anyone wants to watch me cut a 20 minute promo of I ranked all 26 characters of the alphabet. You know, when I get to that point with this whole ranked series, that's when you know I'm going to be scrounging a bit. Luckily for me, all of the unknown are equally as dead. It'd be a one minute video, but it didn't have to be the case, really. Imagine if there were 28 sets of randomized stat spreads for them. They seem you know, unstable and quirky enough for it to work out. They might hang out with gods, but you know they'd still be seen as far less important forms than skin face. Squirtle, baby! But even being pointless most of the time, they still manage to make big moments feel a lot more grand. You know what I mean? You know someone freaky is about to go down once the 28 unknown join the group chat. First, you're seeing one floating around the cave two blocks down your mum's house. Then you're sat watching a PowerPoint presentation from God showing off his JPEG collection. <laughs> This one do be a cosmetic, but I feel like I have to bump it a few notches higher for what's effectively the first regional forms. Unless I'm forgetting, so I probably am. Because down Sinnoh, you've got West Side is the best Shellos, and East Side is the best Shellos. You got Crips and Blood Shellos forms. They actually beef with each other and all. West and East Gastrodons clock each other and it's on site. Should one encounter another of a different color? A fierce battle will inevitably ins- Ah, ah, they should be careful. They should be careful I go with this. Uh, good thing they're not from Unova then. <laughs> Seems like that little Pikachu got a taste for meat. Trying on all of those hats went full-blown cosplayer. But at least it picks up a thing or two with a type-based move to go along with it. Now, let me tell you, this is how it starts. You try on a few jackets, a little bow tie here and there. I'd give it a few more years, one or two generations, till we're seeing a Pikachu furry form. Gonna get caught by Ash and the gang mid fursuit, tucking into his Lucario outfit like, you, you guys, you, you guys, it's not what you think. Obviously, I'm not. I swear, not. No, 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 it's, I, I swear. It's just because I wanted to learn Aurosphere! <laughs> Team Plasma's prize! Creation. Yeah, the little millions of investment put towards a legendary Pokemon, only to have the same ability as Pikachu cosplaying Rey Mysterio. It's the same form change, in a sense, but strictly business. None of this getting changed in the loft of Roger. None of this character gimmick. Yeah, just slide on the USB into the cannon. And give me that type change for the back bullets. <laughs> When it comes to Basculin, the white ones get the pass. Whoa, oh, wait, wait, no, no, hey, hey, look, 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 I, I don't want to get into any of that Gastrodon discourse now. It's the only Basculin that holds the potential of becoming the big fish. <laughs> Out of all three Lycan Rocks, Dusk is the clear winner here, because midday form, more like mid- and Midnight is, uh, just mid with dark mode on. The first Pokemon close to a werewolf, and it's whatever. There's a lot more creative legroom there for them to stretch their quads into. Because I guarantee, trust me, give it a gen or two, and there's going to be a werewolf Pokemon done right. One you don't forget about evolving by the time you wake up in the morning. Maybe even one that actively changes in and out of form when it's night. <laughs> Alpha Pokemon in Legends Arceus is a good start to something I've wanted for a long while ever since Pumpkaboo and Gorgeist came around with four different stages of the thickness. The concept of sized mons and having trade-off for stats. I rate that. The wild don't play about with your technique. The big boys are the meta. Big meaty mons slapping meat. Type advantage. Oh, that's only gonna get you so far. Telling me a 15 foot 2 ton Snorlax, he's not getting his feet tickled by literally 5 foot 3 throw Rogan. It's not happening. 
not enough meat. Some are gonna get genetically hustled like them American basculins. Little manlet three foot tall machamps. Lowest set in school alakazams. Have to give them the plastic spoons. Man, Squirtle might only be getting that skin fade to compensate for being a bit too big boned to withdraw into its own shell. But man, with a trim like that, I don't know why you'd want to be withdrawn into that shell, boy. <laughs> I know people aren't keen on Ice Q. I can see why it's a polarizing, semi-sculptured lad. It's just a well-placed magnifying glass away from looking like a mid-tier Maple Story mob. Don't you think he knows it? Why do you think he puts on the mask? Speed boosts like that and all. Ice Q, he agrees with all he is. Trying to get away quick as possible, not be seen publicly like that. <laughs> Full belly and hangry mode. Oh, oh, very nice. Very quirky. More Pico. More Peko. I thought it gained some big attack boost. Or maybe having a belly full of cream. Give it a defense or health boost, maybe. But the hunger just makes this little goon more evil. And it makes his signature move a dark type move. Little goblin needs his five kilos of cream to fuel that electric typing, apparently. This ability is almost wasted. You put it on the fourth cousin of Pikachu, when you should be given the full belly back to the one true Pikachu. <laughs> I'm not that bothered about Burmy or Wormadan in general, but in a group with all 28 pieces of Exodia, but instead of a jacked Egyptian deity, you get to summon a sheet of paper with the alphabet, and like 15 Pikachus, well not a single one of them, it's been fed all 63 out creamies and rediscovers that Pikachu Goron form. I have to respect the hustle here. They get an actual type change, they get an actual stat change each, it's a good textbook set of forms. <laughs> The four Oricorios really could have just been a group of reskins, one to represent a different Primark building on each of the Alolan Islands. But they went and made a more creatively juicy Burmy, really. It's not genetically signed an ironclad contract to its typing either like the Burmy lot had to. Just one sip of that sweet nectar. And it's breathing fire. It's shooting electricity. It's summoning sheets of paper with the alphabet to teach the set eight Alakazams. <laughs> Especially since it stays as a pure flying type. Tornadus is a mighty C grade compared to the other two forces of nature. But we all know how badly them grade boundaries have shifted. Anyone can fly on in these days to be a force of nature apparently. Hey, let's bring in Kid Goku, Lakitu, Miss Finster. It's free entry and a Jaeger bomb joining this faction. The bottom set Alakazams probably have enough UCAS points for the century. The three piece was all you needed for a full belly, my man. You can keep that fourth wheel enamorous because I'm sure the genie trio would wouldn't even want to have it. You always need a spare tire, you know, in case of a flat, but yeah, nah, 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 mate, nah. I'd rather Fred Flintstone my way about than resort to enamorous. I'm sure the muscular sky men would agree with me there. <laughs> Land Shaman. Uh, yes, it's alright. But this form's a bit underwhelming when it's stacked up against the rest of the illegal legends, though. Mew, Celebi, even Jirachi, unless you probed Pikachu enough, always had the feeling to him that you shouldn't currently be owning them. Shaman, at least in this form, feels more like more like a Larvesta Volcarona kind of mon. Just the one exists, but no one's exactly carving you on walls or writing sea shanties about you. <laughs> I don't blame Minia moving its home from the ozone layer. Not only are you Rayquaza's primary source of sustenance, but you're also about 20 miles out from the nearest Tesco's. That's a bit of a trek, that's not on. I'd probably eat one of these. Looking like that one deformed Maltese you'd get in the corner of the box. I'd chew that boy up with that crunchy core form in the middle, especially of this lineup of flavors. You know, I've never noticed how much I actually like this Pokemon. That's a good mon right there. An all around better take on the Ice Cube gimmick in a sense. Starting out defensive, loses it once you've skinned the Maltese naked, it's like a last resort form. All right, all right, that's it, mate. That's it, mate. You've gone and done it. You've gone and shed me skin. Let's have it. The old mythical music Pokemon that morphs itself from singing, busts out the right tune, and it's ready to scrap. It might sound weird having to get on the karaoke machine before a fight, but you just trust the process. You always need the entrance music to psych yourself up. Got to get into that killer instinct mentality before shifting its biceps from the brain to hands. It's a shame the only songs it knows are apparently the top 40. It can't seem to get rid of that normal type. <laughs> 
You wouldn't imagine something looking like Cramorun of all things to be hosting one of the most creative form changes going. Going against your primal instinct for sustenance. Maybe the only creature where the urge to scran is outweighed by the urge to cause bodily harm. Your man just spawns a Pikachu to choke on. Don't they have like a 10% spawn rate in forests? We like to do a little force asphyxiation just to land a good shot on you. Hey, my brain might be lacking oxygen, but you're lacking solid foods in your diet after that wedge Pikachu. Pikachu paralyzes you. Good thing he ain't gulping caked up 90s Pikachu. Gulp missile gonna be a gulp nuke spitting out that chonker. A godly set of form changes. And like the very weekly masses he orders us all to attend. You're boring. Yeah, Satan over here, he levitates. He made himself Dr. Octopus and God over here just changes the RGB settings on his belly piercing. But given what we ended up with, maybe maybe it's best it just got that color slider job. But don't get me wrong, it's insane to be any type. But as a form change, end of the day, it doesn't matter what color the slab it's got taped on him is. Arceus can serve up the milk and cookies for tucking you into bed for good whenever it wants. In fact, he canonically decides when it's your final bedtime. Then you have Sil Valley trying to play God, Arceus fake Jordan's form, created specifically to gimmick infringe on Arceus. <laughs> The two who got the better side of the deal when the genies changed form. Landorus might be undeniable with the moon shoes giving it that filthy dual type. Worthy of being a few steps ahead in the Pokedex just so you know it's the main event of the pack. Thunderous is still my guy out of the pack and for as lethal as ground and flying is, I feel like electric is the most fitting type for our big cloud goblin. <laughs> I don't care about Calyrex. That king gets banished to the dead tier dungeon and whatever it's got down in the royal stables, they're not too far off themselves. But saddling them up together is a unique and good enough improvement to salvage all three of them up a decent amount. Purely judging this as a set of alternate forms, these two shouldn't be low down really. My main issue with the two horses was how they looked unfinished. Like a far worse version of the legendary pair when they're off season. Except these two don't have any sacred item to to make them complete like those two. But in this case, I have to give it to them. All three of them were improved by fusing them. Imagine reading a scroll that determines how you're gonna idly stand for the rest of your life. Cub Fu actually gets the options to weigh in on here. Gets to look in at different dojos to train up in. Probably goes to open days like it's a uni. I guess that's why it's a legendary in the first place. One of the few creatures that Arceus is blessed with free will with its evolution. It's like if Tyrogue actually had the choice between specializing in fighting with its hands, legs, dome and it wasn't just genetically hardwired into him. Form changes based on your training of choice, your discipline, your combat stance. That's a banger idea by my estimate. <laughs> Hooper's always been clapped looking to me. It, it, the base form, something about it just seems, I don't know if I'm just saying this because it's holding a ring, but it looks like it should only belong in Sonic and the Secret Rings. And that, that's not a good, that's not a good thing. But the gimmick of its real power being locked away in a little prison bottle and this base form being more of like, like a daily runner form, it sells it a lot more for me. That and the Unbound form is a massive improvement. It's more genie than the four genies. They really should try sorting something out, something suitable to keep enamorous off the streets, keep him locked behind bars in a prison vape. I might be warming up to Hooper the more I look into it, hey, the more I see. You got legends saying it just grafted an entire castle just for the treasure, and that can only mean one thing. Hooper is a hustler. Even Meowth would be asking about him, miring the finesse there. <laughs> The Shaman of Land is just no match for the Shaman of the Sky. Base Shaman is borderline a baby form in comparison, and Shaman gets off so easy. Man, I wish I could sniff a few flowers and fly about. Most of us have to smoke the plants for it to take effect. This transformation makes you realize why you cop the action replay to forcibly be chosen, selected by Sammy Oak, and trigger that Shaman event. <laughs> I've not been too keen on Zygarde in the past, seeing as its vocation in life, its sole purpose is to fill caves. Might as well be a secret base houseplant. But as a set of form changes, it's one of the more out there. You gotta go down Alola and get me cube, then fill it up with a hundred brain slugs. Love me a bit of goo collecting to spawn up some Zygards. That Zygarde jar better be full to the brim with goo if you want that 100% form, player. <laughs> Mimikyu's gotta be one of the most interesting specimens spawning from Alola. It just wants to be another cosplay Pikachu and maybe it had you fooled a bit and then the busted form has you like, Wait a minute. Th this isn't a Pikachu. 
The Pikachu I know doesn't have a neck. Busted form means he's been exposed. Had some dodgy DMs leaked. Now it's gotta make you disappear. You're safe as long as you just play into the gimmick. You gotta really sell that you believe it's still a Pikachu. And your sound. I mean, Team Rocket could get away with painting their toenails and be instantly unrecognizable. This is at least a B-grade disguise by anime standards. It's like a wacky Scooby-Doo villain. Except when Fred goes, Okay, gang, let's see who the monster really is. Scooby and the gang immediately perish. The genies are still my guys. Love the concept. Still wish they were more like a singular airborne Exodia muscle man in the sky. But I do still really like all three genies. That's right, all three. Three incarnate forms. Yeah, even though they're just reskins of each other, it's near enough one design. All three genies are bangers. A complete trio, baby. <laughs> It makes sense why Kiram is so underwhelming to me. It's all building up to this. A set of banger forms which may have the government name of Kiram. We all know Zekrom and Reshiram are pulling the weight here. Because I forget that it's even meant to be Kiram. Don't even associate them. To me, they might as well be primal Zekrom and Reshiram. That's how much of an improvement over the base form these are. But here's what I don't understand, right? No idea how in this lore, this is meant to be waiting for a hero to fill in the missing parts of its body. What, what, his Historically, Kieran's been waiting thousands of years for humans to get around to inventing DNA splices. Nah, I ain't having that. The entry just says the hero uses truth and ideals. Well, yeah, you ain't gonna pay for a pair of DNA splices with your precious truth and ideals, are you, son? Ah, oh, yes, the legendary Kieran. Fret not, my icy friend. I'll fill your missing parts with my most powerful weapon yet. Intellect. My Reddit karma ought to fuse you two together. <laughs> The Cosmic clamps his way into consuming the sun and moon to get these two delightfully devilish looking dusk forms. And those clamps are a table for two. Because the Cross was just a Kirim who didn't get honey dicks. Because you know the numbers don't lie. Three greater than two. And they definitely don't lie since the Cosmos managed to perfect sell its way into becoming the most powerful being in existence. At least up until Eternatus decides it's time to use the planet as its own personal claw machine again. Starting to notice a strong correlation relation between omnipotent specimens. It's all in the claws, the pincers, the cramps, the crosma, eternitus, Crabrawler, mate. You see, that's Kiram's issue right there. Absolutely shameful set of limbs on him. He'd struggle grabbing a McDonald's Sprite with them paws. Probably had to get a hold of its singular legendary with a grabber. <laughs> Darmanitan would have to be so demotivating to fight against. Doesn't even look like you could knock it out in a Pokemon battle. Feel like you'd need to hook up a pair of Donkey Kong Jungle Beat bongos to smack him up. But imagine, the moment you think you finally started to get some damage on him, he reaches enlightenment. Reverse CTE, you give this thing brain damage, becomes more intelligent. Darmanitan is one of my top Unova picks, so I didn't think it could get much better than it really. I never expected a Galarian Snowman to spawn out of this, along with its own insane Zen mode. Choking yourself out with a mouse in the name of on-site beef is one thing. A suicidal snowman willing to melt itself just to make sure you melt with it. You must have been like the direct root cause of global warming for it to have that kind of motive against you. <laughs> Wouldn't be a modern pair of legendary Pokemon without a form change going on. But with Zacian and Zamazenta, not only are they already a pair of legendary bangers in their crown forms, but I actually rate these two for going backwards instead. Instead of having their form in the main story be a giant fusion where they turn into a furry Aegislash. It's an interesting take, because so many of the legends get locked away for an entire millennium, yet emerge from their garage-sized cave fully bricked up, ripe and ready for some genocide. You'd think Groudon at least want to have a big stretch, maybe scroll through Twitter a bit when it gets up, but nah, none of that. Straight to business. Time to sunburn the whole planet. Legends that have been out of action for a thousand years slumbers are gonna have an off season. It's interesting seeing them in a day-to-day -day sense. The crowned forms are prestige themselves, but I feel like they wouldn't be as impactful on their own. I reckon I even prefer the minimalist Amazenta form before it gets absorbed by 500 kilos of steel. All four complement each other in a sense. The base forms here really sell the impression that these are creatures from a bygone era. 
wishy-washy without any friends about. He's only getting above enamorous. But once it's met up with the boys, nothing is stopping the wishy-washy school. Gyarados makes entire countries flee. A school of wishy-washy makes Gyarados join that nationwide evacuation it kicked off. Fish forming up so much they make a submarine. The only thing that's sub is whoever's dumb enough to beef with them. Hundreds of wishy-washy subs collectively making the wishy-washy dumb. Enough of them show up to class and they spawn up the demon of the sea like a mortal Basque Legion. <laughs> All Greninja needed for a beefy upgrade was a quick warm up set the body and a hint of well, I'd say about five pints worth of main character syndrome, and it becomes Ash Greninja. It still throws me off seeing the games directly acknowledge Ash like that. What, some scientist was like, yeah, no, I chose the name after that jabroni from Kanto with the fat Pikachu. If Ash is enough to cause this much of a power boost, I guess calling it Red Greninja would have broke the game. I wouldn't even want to imagine what happened if a Greninja gets on well with Cynthia. I'll rate the Greninja redesign here. It's just the right amount of different from the original. I have to respect the hustle Game Freak did to give this thing a form. This is what happens when they want to give Greninja a mega evolution, but they really didn't want to do the same for the other two from Kalos. <laughs> Gala borderline piped up with a form change for every route it has. Objectively, yeah, there's plenty of better forms than what Toxtricity has, but two elite S-tier designs, an elite S-tier gimmick with walking guitar and bass Pokemon, they're undeniable. Even putting aside the caveman bias of what colours and assortment of lines my brain is drawn to, nature-based forms, it's another idea with plenty of potential going for it. Them three foot tall Machamps better hope they don't lean towards the modest side of nature gonna be depressed from not making the same gains as their adamant brothers. I know I'm in a small minority who just thinks Kyogre is is just clapped looking and I'm not apologizing but that primal form it went from clapped to being legitimately satisfying to stare at my brain feasts on that juicy color palette they say Minio's color is based on how it eats well I must have got my legendaries mixed up or at least Rayquaza's the one providing the ingredients for the Sunday roasts this trio has because it looks like Kyogre's been on a strict diet of all seven Minio cores to get that kind of glow up they couldn't have added a more perfect amount of spice to Kyogre to bring it out of that base inflatable sunbed form. And then you have Primal Groudon. The Groudon that actually has me believing that this is a believable matchup. Kyogre knows if this Groudon even dips his toes into that ocean, they're going to be serving up three-piece orca and chips down the Hoenn KFCs. Dude's like a reverse lobster. He goes in and the water screams. I don't think water can even exist within a 30-mile radius. Groudon creates land. This Primal form has me thinking he's got it all wrong. I don't think he creates land. Now, I reckon the guy just walks about and, hey, hey, where's, where's that water gone? Hey, what, 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 we got land spawned in here? Everyone wants more evolutions. Look, I understand, but nah, not me. I want this little plasma ghoul invading everything. Rotom Air Fryer, Rotom Switch, Rotom Nokia, Rock Type. Man, I'll take a Rotom Game Boy printer. I don't mind. I'm easy. Because these are iconic form changes right here, fellas. Some of them are far more useless appliances than the other. Clearly, the Rotom works best fusing with your washing machine. The oven's not a bad shout either. And I haven't really used all of them. I think the desk fan Rotom, you're not missing too much out on. And it's mandatory now. Everyone's got the Rotom phone, the Rotom Dex, arguably the most elite form change gimmick. Both Giratinas are peak physical specimens, altered and origin, it could go either way. Ironically enough, the form it takes to visit the mortal realm is twice as terrifying. It's like Giratina looked at other Pokemon to try and blend in and decided on one of the more cute ones to base itself on, you know, as to not draw too much attention. But in Giratina's busted mind, it looks at Scolopede like, hey, look at this little fella. He's got little toxic spikes all over him. Where'd he get those from? But even so, boots on ground Giratina seems more like a mini boss, a bouncer you'd have to show your ID to to get into hell. Origin Giratina is more like the one you see at the penthouse. I've seen some people like Origin Dialga and Palkia for being these disfigured forms as a kind of punishment from their big daddy deity. If it is like a two week grounding from Arceus laying down the biblical law, maybe it is more fitting than I give it credit for that Giratina's taken on Origin form puts it into its prime, like a middle finger to Arceus. <laughs> 
Kalos comes with all the useless cosmetic ones and then hits you with the most filthy form change going with Aegis Slash. I'll rate the sword and shield pair, but why am I going to settle for a package deal when you've got the all-in-one Aegis Slash? If you're unlucky enough to run into one who's not polite enough to follow the code of honor of turn-based combat, it's not like it takes three to five business days to shift a shield in front of you. It's a good thing it doesn't have a pair of feet on him. It'd be mugging you for your Cherim Stain Jordans getting grafted by the family sword because the family chandelier isn't about to save you on the mean streets of Kalos. <laughs> Aegis Slash being a literal weapon with its god dumbing strength, that is worthy of the S tier. Especially if it's an Aegis Slash who's on form with its stance changes. But you all know what's coming, because there is no if with Deoxys. It's always on point with its mighty morphing abilities. Nearly any power up you want. Base form alone is already like an Aegis Slash, one that doesn't float around at Goron Pikachu speeds. Even Arceus needs to shuffle through his tablet drawer to shift form. Deoxys would chuck Aegis Slash in his own own draw, save him like the good china. Only be seeing the kitchen lights when Deoxys is serving up a delicious carvery dinner for the guests. I don't think it's possible for there to be any tier list Deoxys is relevant in without it sitting comfortably in that S tier. Even without the mighty morphin powers. Best psychic type, legendary, mythical, maybe. Mm -hmm.